Wizard of West LA. Today we are talking about stepper motors. And the interesting part about stepper motors is here's what a stepper motor looks like. These devices are used in just about everything from cars to your 3D printer, your regular printer, anything that has a motion that needs to be done at a particular amount of motion. For example, on a regular motor, this will just spin as a 360. It'll just spin round and round and round. But on this, using a particular communication with these, with these pins, setting a bit to these on or off, will adjust this to, to move one click, so to speak, or many clicks, or however you want to do it. And with this motor, I'll, I'll post a link of how you get these parts. Of course, these parts are rather common. So you get the stepper motor here, and then there's a little controller board. I recommend you get the controller board. It's a lot easier to work with. And the way this is wired up is you have your stepper motor and you plug it into this pin, which is on the control. And then the rest of this, let me zoom into here. You have on these controller boards, you have the same pattern. I've tried different controller boards. This is for four pins. So you have in one, in two, in three, and in four. So I'm gonna show you how you wire this to the Pi Pico. So on in one, which is labeled on this, which is labeled on the board right here on in one, that one is going to go Let me change the video right here so you can see that. In one is going to go to this pin right here on the Raspberry Pi, the very last, I can move this out of the way, the very last pin. In two goes to the next pin. And then we have in three goes to the end, I can see it right there. The very last pin here, and then the last pin in four goes to here. Let me give you what those pins are. So on in one goes to this last pin. In one goes to this pin, which is listed as GP15. This is GP14, which is in two. In three goes to GP16, which is the last pin. And then you have your last one, GP17. And on these boards, the way this is wired up, on the corners is gonna ask you for a five volt supply. I supplied it separately. Don't supply from the Raspberry Pi, you will fry it. I did it separately. So I have those on, I have those right here connected to a power supply right here, which is providing five volts on these lines. So we're looking at four connections. Let me zoom it out. So you're looking at these four connections. So now let's look at some code. So the first thing you want to do is go into programming and go into Thony Python IDE. And we went out, we went through this on another video of configuring it. So it runs the Raspberry Pi Pico. So let's start with our first lines here. So we have from machine import pin so we're going to be using a library which supports this that has something called pin i'll explain this as we go through it the next thing we want to import u time which is a delay you want to put a delay on this so now we define a little group of information here called pins 
and we're going to put them between brackets. So the first pin is pin 15, which we were talking about, GP15, and we want to tell the Pi Pico that is an out that is an out pin. And we'll put a comma. You can put these in one line, but we're gonna just hit enter on each one. The next one is pin 14. And we're gonna make sure that is pin out. Make sure to capitalize out. The next one is pin 16. And we're telling it it's pin, it's an output pin. And the next one is pin 17. And we're going to say that's an out pin for an output. In our end, we close this off with another brace. Let's add a little comment here so you can understand. This is listed as in one. This one is in two. Whoops. This one is in three. You recognize those from the pins that we were just working with. And this one is in four. And those pins are out. So the next thing we want to do is called a sequence. And let me give you the code for this. Same idea, we're putting braces on this. We, we, what we want to do is I'm going to type this, which means these pins The way you activate this is you have to move it by turning on one of those pins in one, two, three, four. And this sequence, you'll see this little sequence. This is how you move it. So you turn on the first one, then the next one I turn it off, then I turn on the second one, then turn off the other ones. Then I turn on the third one. Then I turn on the last one. Then I hit enter and then put the other brace. The way this works with those four wires, think of these groups as the four wires. The first one is on, the rest are off. This one's going to go through the first step. The next step is going to have the second pin is going to be on. Then the third pin is going to be on, then the fourth pin. So it's in one, two, three, and four. In order to make this work, we need to make some sort of cycle to make this work. So we're going to use a loop while true and use these four, these two for loops, which I will describe in a second how that works. That's pin or pins. And this is where we are putting in a value. Last line is we need a delay, which we're putting asleep. And I'm going to set this at a very, very low amount so we can see this thing actually work. And then I'm going to slow it down so you can see it work. So what's happening here, you can use for loops to go through a, a sequence or those sets of numbers. So for each step, which is right here, 
each step it's going to go to the first one and then in the first one it goes through this other loop which is i is the range of those pins in that case as i've figured out it's zero one two three so as it cycles through those it's going to put those values in those pins. I did this manually, but it was a lot of code to explain it. And it uses copy and paste a lot. It's not too bad, but this does it all in one loop. So what it's doing with the first pin, it's putting this number and then putting the next pins in here as zeros. Then it's going to the next one and putting a zero on the first pin, then a one the next pin, then zeros and the rest. And it does that over and over and over again and makes it spin. Now let's see if this compiles. And I'm just going to run it through. Do we get any errors? I'm going to run it through the Pico. And we can save it as stepper. lesson okay so we have an error in 17 because we did not put the colon there so now it is running and let me show you a video of how that is running so now the program is running and I put a piece of clay on here so you can see it you can see it's spinning 360s because what it's doing is going through all those pins, turning them on, on and off rapidly. These go so fast, all you're going to see are the red lights. Now, what I'm going to do on that U time statement, where it says U time dot sleep, then the, the open parentheses 0 0.001, let me set that to under half a second so you can kind of see it. If I do it too slow, it gets hard to see. So I'm going to change that right now. I'm going to stop it and then run it. Okay. Now you can see the lights and you can actually see what it's doing. Then you can see this. This is, I can feel it moving, but it's still kind of slow. So it's going through each light. You can see what it's doing and then going to four. You can see how it's changing. You might be able to see it as it goes through. Let me change it again to an, a little bit higher speed. Maybe that will work. Okay. Think, uh, okay, that's at one uh, 250. I can feel it moving on here. But you can see what this does. You see those lights. This is the important part. That's how it moves. And if you reverse the sequence, I'm going to try reversing the sequence real fast. So let me run at higher speed. There, so you run at a higher speed, you just see them on, and this is spinning. Now check this out, I'm going to reverse the order. I stopped it, now I'm gonna reverse the order. And let's see if that goes the other way. And I'm just going to Use, you know, use the editor, and let's run it through and see what it does. Heh, <laughs> spins the other direction when you reverse the order. So that's what happens when you do it both ways. Like I said, I tried to slow it down, but it's hard to see it. So I'm going to put it back the other way. Kind of fun to play with the order. And what's useful about that 
is you can go through and you can actually select one bit and move it a small amount. Now I really appreciate all the work my, my 3D printer goes through when you're doing a an exact piece. Can you imagine how small the motions are? It's pretty amazing. And that is how it works. That is a basic wire up for a four wire stepper motor. So if you liked the video, feel free to give us a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to the channel as we're putting up a lot of new videos in my new location. And it's a lot easier to shoot videos and a lot more fun too, playing around with all the new gadgets. So remember, keep on learning.